we're back on the record after a break in um, JU 1688.01. If you'll raise your right hand, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Okay. State your name for the record, please. Rachel Israel. And where are you employed at, Ms. Israel? I am employed at the Catholic and Cleveland Children's Center. In what capacity? I am sworn in under the 7th Judicial District of the State of Alabama, the District Attorney's Office, okay. as an investigator to investigate crimes against children. Police officer, investigator. Okay. How long have you been doing that? Um, as law enforcement, eleven years. Okay. And uh, you were here at the first hearing, shelter care hearing, so you yes. you're familiar with the parents, the home, homes. Can you? Uh, Tell us how you became involved in this case. Um, I received a call from the sheriff's office um, stating that uh, there was a homeless couple at RMC that had given birth to a child. Um, DHR was on scene, was requesting assistance. Do you know which DHR was on the scene? I did not know at the time. Okay. Uh, what, if anything, did you do once you received that call? Um, when I've been made uh, contact with uh, Mr. Hayworth, um, officer, security officer at the RMC, and I was taken back to a room back behind the nurses' station, and there I made contact with Stacy Jackson. Okay. And um, can you tell the court how you? how you became acquainted with the parents once you arrived at the hospital. Um, when I arrived there, uh, Stacy informed me that there was a uh, court order that was being signed uh, by the judge to remove the child from the parents' custody over to the state custody. Okay. What concerns did you have with the parents? after you started in with your investigation and cooperation with DHR, what was your main concern? Well, the main concern, obviously, is the protection of the child to make sure he's in a safe environment. Um, as law enforcement, serve and protect in any capacity, um, making sure that that child has a safe place to go home to. Um, while I was there, there was some information that was brought in that there had been um, individual similar name that they had identified uh, as bringing uh, people across the border at some point in time we weren't sure if this was even the same person okay but but you received that information yes at, once i was there on scene yes yes was it concerning to you how similar the information was to who was there did you find out if these people had ever been to Arizona? Um, I did not do that part of the investigation because of RMC and the jurisdiction. Anderson PD came out and actually was assigned to attempt to identify the people that were there. In this case, Mr. Mr. Mrs. Hall. Did, did you have any cooperation with with Anderson PD? Did y'all share information as far as what you found out and uh, what information was gathered during this investigation? When I was there, um, Aniston took Mr. Holm into a separate room to try to identify him, get his information. Um, at that time, I was notified that uh, the court order had been signed. We went okay. into the room. And before removing the baby, did you search the room? Not before removing the baby, no. Okay. When we, upon entering, I observed a knife on the stand. Okay, what kind of knife? Uh, like a hunting knife, about six inch knife that was sitting there on the stand. Was that concerning to you? Yes. Okay. And he said some pepper spray and knowing that RMC is a no weapon zone. It's concerning uh, also. Did you confiscate that? I did. All right. 
that's part of it. It's all a part of this. I mean, I don't want to try to bifurcate this, but it's, as part of this, did you have any uh, opportunity to search the room at some point in time? I asked uh, Ms. Holm if there was any other weapons in the, in the actual room, and she said that uh, that she knew that in the backpack there was it was a green like duffel bag backpack sitting on the little couch right there. That she okay. knew that there was some more pepper spray inside there. Uh, was it pepper spray, mace, or do you recall? It was a good stuff, pepper spray. It okay. Was police officers use. Okay, so it's a police officer grade, yeah. all right, and. Uh, What information did you gather about their the parents' living situation? Um, Ms. Holm told me that they had been, um, they were on, they considered themselves to be missionaries. They were on a mission. They had walked from Montgomery. Um, she explained that the way that they, that Jesus had did and walked the earth, that's what they were doing. Um, I asked her, you know, how they provided for themselves, as she said, through offerings that people gave them uh, for their growth. Um, I, re I recall asking her, did she have a place to stay? Um, you know, she told me that she had been several weeks overdue with the baby and had to be taught to, brought to the hospital because of, I guess, the baby not being born on time. Um, she did disclose that, that, that she had planned on having um, the baby um, at Chiha Mountain uh, in the spring water. She wanted the baby to be born in spring waters in Chiha Mountain. Okay. Uh, did you get in depth any about their, where they had, where they began their walk from? Well, she told me right off the bat that they had began from Montgomery, that okay. she had her vehicle parked at a um, storage unit is what I understood. Okay. And um, did they say what they had brought with them? Uh, the clothes on the back. Okay. And uh, you said you searched the duffel bag for the mace. I did removed you? the duffel bag actually from the room and took okay. it in to where the officer was um, attempting to identify Mr. Holm. And I asked him, was there anything else in there? So I you know, explained to him that RMC is a no weapon zone, that I would have to search the bag. Um, began to do that, uh, confiscated the spray, and also the spray and the knot that was there. Okay. Um, did you talk at all with, with either one of them about any provisions they had for the child at the hospital? No. Did you see any provisions that they had for the child? Mm -hmm. I remember seeing um, inside the duffel bag a smaller bag, I want to say like a green little bag. And I asked Mr. Holm what it was and he said that was necessities for the baby. Mm -hmm. And I do recall like unfolding the top, like unrolling it and finding, I think, I think because I was kind of tunnel vision on finding weapons, I wasn't, you know, clearly, but I do remember seeing the ointment, like baby ointment mm -hmm. okay. inside the bag. How large do you think that bag was? It wasn't very large, it was about. I want to say maybe um, six by eight. Okay, thank you. The reason I asked for that is because we're recording this and we can't uh, see yes, what your hand gesture sorry. is. Sorry. Uh, based on all the information you had received, the weapons been in the room, uh, the information about uh, people out of Arizona, uh, and I think I'd asked you, I don't know if you ever answered, did you find out whether they had been in Arizona? The parents yes. were, okay. Yeah, I did, I did talk to Ms. Holm and ask her had she ever been in Arizona, she said she had. Did, did you have an idea about how long ago it was they were in Arizona? I don't recall. Okay. Uh, but based on the totality of the information, did, did, was it concerning to you about the, did the child, their parenting ability come into concern with you? I was concerned about the, um, the home itself, the, the well-being of the child. Okay. And um, I 
you can go into a little bit more detail of what made, other than what we just talked about, was there anything else that caused concern for you at that time? Um, was the lack of provision for the child itself. I mean, if you're homeless, you have nowhere to take the child there to be um, safe. Um, I mean, it is Chiha we're talking about. You know, it's cold weather. Um, not cold, cold, but I mean cold and you know, you know out there. Um, it being a newborn, yes, I was very concerned. Um, concerned um, because uh, at that point we could not identify positively Mr. Hall. Alright. Do you, what information did you, did you receive on his identity? at the time of the hospital. Um, I was informed by the officer from APD that he ran his social, ran his driver's license and both came back not on file. Okay, so uh, Mr. Holmes had given him a social and a, a driver's license, out of state driver's license. And he couldn't find record of him. That's correct. And so that, along with everything else, was very concerning also. It was very concerning. All right. Uh, Uh, do you know what explanation was given about why he, he was not found by Mr. Holmes? Did he? At the time, no. I did not know why. Um, I want to say later on that night, um, I learned that he had told uh, DHR about um, his grandfather having served under a president and that oh, his name had been sustained. Uh, was there any statements made in front of you such as that uh, type of statement about conspiracy or anything? I was referred to as the beast. Okay. The DHR was the devil. Alright. Who referred to you as the beast? Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes. Yes. Uh, and I explained to Mr. Holmes before I left and gave him one of my cards. I told him that um, the, the reason I was there, I told him that I had assisted DHR. I informed him that um, his weapons would be at the sheriff's office and that I encouraged him to attempt to get his um, be, being fingerprinted. That way we could clearly identify who he was. Okay. And, um, and obviously it's an upsetting situation you're taking the baby from you know but I mean not you personally but it, it, it was their actions <coughs> over and above, over and above or is this or did they just show the type of reaction you would expect from anybody um I was concerned uh, by the way they talked basically um his home and him both. Um, Can you explain that? Well, I mean, I'm sitting, I'm sitting there, I'm explaining the situation to Mr. Holm, and he's like, you know, the devil is in this. This is, you know, this is not right, and you know, we're totally feeling like, okay, we're here to do a job. You know, I, I don't have, I don't know you, I don't know anything about you. I'm not here to harm you or do anything. This is not personal. This is yeah. here because I'm here to do a job, and I explained that to Mr. Holm, and of course, he went on and on about, you know. How the devil was in this, and I was like, okay. Yeah. Did she contribute to that conversation? No, Mr. she was actually. This was actually afterwards. She, he was at sitting at the nurse desk. At the okay. Time. Uh, well, let's back up to the point that the baby was removed. Were you present? In the I was. Room? Who, were, who do you recall was the man? Um, myself, Stacy, um, my intern, I believe. Um, it's, Stacey Jackson. Yes, from I'm sorry. And yes, Stacey Jackson, from DHR, from DHR. Uh -huh. and um, Mr. Hayward. Okay, and uh, at the time that uh, Miss Holm was informed that the baby had to be removed, was she cooperative? Um, she was. I explained to her why I was there. You know, I told her we had a court order signed from the judge um, that we had to remove the child from her custody. Um, she tried to get up out of the bed and leave at that point, and I detained her uh, by her, her left arm and told her that she needed to comply. 
Um, Mr. Hayworth was standing on the other side of the bed. Um, she was grasping the baby very tightly. It became concerning. Um, I told her that she did not need to harm the baby or I would press charges. I would take her to jail for child abuse. Um, because the, the, of the, the you know, she, you, you could tell the baby started crying, he was in distress. Um, at that point, Miss Stacy stepped in and took the baby, removed the infant. Okay. How many times did y'all have to ask for her to turn over the oh, baby? Oh, several before? times. Okay. And so she did not turn over the baby peacefully. No. And she, she grasped the child so tight. So tight, that, yes. I mean, sounds like you had to threaten her to release the hold on her. Well, I wasn't threatening, I was just telling her how it was going to be. Well, that's what I meant. Just, yeah. uh, and uh, at the time that y'all went to remove, Stacy went to remove the baby. What's the baby feeding? The baby had fed, but he wasn't feeding anymore. He was laying. You could tell he was laying. Okay. I mean, we, when we asked, we asked, you know, was the baby feeding? She said yes, but we could tell the baby was not feeding. Okay, so, I mean, would you have waited till the baby was yes. feeding if you had but thought the baby was mm -hmm. feeding? Um, would you consider what y'all done a restrain in any way? No. Okay, just um, uh, precaution more? Yes. All right, and... Uh, Did she make any of those statements to you after you had assisted in taking the baby about being the devil or anything, the devil was in this or anything like that? That was afterwards, yes. I mean, did she make any of those statements she, afterwards? No, she was the one who referred to us as the devil and the beast. Um, Stacy sat down after the baby had been removed and was trying to hold a conversation with Ms. Holm. Mm -hmm. And then, then um, she left the room and I sat down to hold a conversation with her to try to get to know, you know, more about the situation, to calm her down also. Um, explain her, you know, why we were here, what we were doing. And um, that's when, yes, referred to as the devil and the beast. Okay. Uh, Have you had any subsequent contact with either one of them since the night of the hospital? No. Yeah. All right. As part of your investigation, have you gathered any records as far as uh, the identity? Mm -hmm. um, on the 14th uh, October, um, I was informed by County County personnel that Mr. Holman came down and um, be fingerprinted at the County County Sheriff's Office. Okay. Was there any uh, concerns about him being fingerprinted? Um, they brought to my attention that um, the machine that we have at Objection, the Objection, Your Honor, here, sir. Judge, if, if this is part of her business record, I would like to ask for a business record exception. Is this something that she has pertained through her, or information she learned through her investigation? She's speaking about what somebody else has told her about the um, fingerprints and not the uh, first person view. No, I understand. You can rephrase. As part of your investigation, do you gather information from other departments? I do. Okay. And as part of your business record, do you keep those records? We do. Yes. All right. And the information was, I'm requesting about the fingerprints. Do you have, did you get information from another department? I do. And is that part of your record? That is. And are you a custodian of that record? I am. Uh, I'd ask that that information be let in through the exception of business record. Your Honor. What's he trying to admit? He's trying to admit testimony. A no, no, testimony about the fingerprints. show. Okay. Uh, 
what information to show to show uh, that there was concerns as to their uh, that his fingerprints may have been tampered with. Okay, and that's harmful to the child. How? I think it's. How, how's it relevant to here, what we're here for today? I think it again plays to the mindset of the conspiracy theory that everybody's against him and steps he might have taken to avoid ability to be identified. <coughs> If you feel that you're able to, um... I don't know that fingerprints have anything to do with mindset, Your Honor. If, Ms. if, if Investigator Israel didn't conduct the fingerprints, then she didn't conduct the fingerprints and shouldn't be allowed to testify as to anything about the fingerprints. If she didn't do the fingerprinting, how do you raise an issue if you didn't if you didn't do the fingerprinting? I think under her business records she can testify to what was there. Um, you know, as far as concerns, things like that. Did it raise concern for her? It may or may not have, uh, but it needs to be very, very limited in its scope. Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay. In the records, it, it, he went fingerprint. He got his weapons back? No. No. Alright. Was there anything with the fingerprints that were concerning to you? They seem to have been distortioned. Alright. Uh, did it make it difficult to be identified? It is. Okay. Objection, Your Honor. She's not the one that did the fingerprints. She didn't hold my hand as she was doing the fingerprints. Okay. We've already passed that point. Okay. But Mr. Hamlin, if you'll... Um, Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what concerns did you have about the distortion of the fingerprints? What What is that? That he was attempting to um, not allow us to identify him properly. Okay. But there was some hidden reason behind that. Uh, but you were able to identify him eventually. Weren't yes. You? You know, we're able to exclude him from the person in Arizona. That is correct. Uh, were you able to run a criminal background check on him? I was. And um, what, if anything, did you find that would be concerning in that background? Um, several charges at one point in time that he'd been arrested for. What type of charges? Battery, aggravated assault, um, sh shoplifting, a DV. Okay. And as a totality of the circumstances there, did that leave you to have concerns for this child? Yes. Say why that in itself, along with everything else, raised concerns for you? Because the, of the violence, uh, violent charges usually, aggravated assault, a violent charge is also considered a battery. Uh, obviously, you know, more to, I don't know if there's, I can't opinionate it. Gotcha. Uh, had you asked him if there was, a, if he had any background? No, no, I did okay. not. You had not approached yeah. him. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. That's all I got at this time. I'm going to pass you. Parents? Okay. Um, do you need to take a moment, Mr. Kirby, before you get started? We can if you need to. Okay. Just a moment, Your Honor. 